On this episode of Stupid Money, I found my true calling. This will make you an official punk. It was a hot floor today, and it was a hot truck. And then I tell them, I don't know, you tell me if I'm a hunk. If you're ever in the Army, don't volunteer for driving the general's car. Gotcha. Because that's the general's car. <laughs> that's not something you see every day. Uh, you get nothing. nothing. You, get, you, get, <laughs> oh, you get a high five. Have you ever done anything stupid with your money? It's been 40 years since I was a college hunk, but I'm ready to go. <laughs> Have you ever done something stupid with your money? You ever made a guitar out of barn wood? No, John. I've always wanted a four-button jacket. You ready to lose? To the dentist office. Thank you so very much. It's How you great doing? to see you. Likewise, welcome to the house that Junk built. Thank you. I'm, I'm anxious to see your place. I see a number of things here. One right behind you. Tell me about this. What's this door? Is that the first so, limo you own? Yeah, this, this is actually the door from the original beat up cargo van that mm -hmm. uh, my business partner and I, Omar Solomon, uh, used to haul junk going mm -hmm. into our senior year of college. What was amazing to me is that he started this business when he was in college. Uh, mm -hmm. So we bought it from Omar's mom's furniture store and we just ran around town putting flyers in mailboxes that said college hunks hauling junk, had our cell phone on it. And Omar actually wanted to keep the whole van. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, you know, would Babe Ruth get rid of the first bat he hit a home <laughs> right. run with? Uh, but I didn't think that we had enough space for it, so we settled on keeping the door in the driver's seat. I do want to point out the dent in the side yeah. of the door uh, is uh, something that happened on a job. I think it was one of our very first jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, a uh, uh, radiator fell down a flight of stairs mm -hmm. and smashed into the side of the door. And oh. so that was one of our first casualties of being business owners was that <laughs> dent right there. We were doing all the work ourselves, so we didn't have a call center, we didn't have a software. We were driving the van, we were hauling the junk, we were answering the cell phone, and we we would have a, an 800 number on the back of the van that was routed to our cell phone. And so we'd be multitasking in the van while driving, not probably the safest thing to do. People would call the 800 number on the back of the van to complain about the erratic driving. I'd be the one in the driver's seat answering the phone and saying, no, we don't condone that type of driving in our company. We'll tell those guys to be safer when they're on the road. We probably fired ourselves at least three or four times that first summer. And uh, you know, that's actually when a mentor recommended to us, if you're gonna grow, you gotta learn how to work on the business, not just in the business. You gotta create. Driving like that, you fit right in on all that DC traffic. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but uh, that's one of those memories that, that really stands out for me uh, in, so the, in the early days. So quit? Uh, quit answering know. the phones and hauling. I would say it took us about a year to have the processes and systems to where we could have confidence to hire people to do the work that we were doing eventually have another truck, let alone eventually another location. That was gonna be the key to having those systems and processes for us to, to scale. Can you just pick out like two main impacts that, yes. that stands out in your mind? First would be the check uh, from the business plan competition mm -hmm. uh, our senior year of college. And I think that gave us the confidence and the credibility to go on and actually start the business as a full-time venture after college. You know, our parents and friends were like, you're gonna, you're gonna graduate college and do what? Haul junk? A yeah, $10,000 uh, check would give any graduate uh, from college some confidence. Exactly, exactly. Uh, good. You know, we, we were actually uh, on both Oprah and the Nate Berkus show a couple uh -huh. times, uh, uh -huh. which was, again, for at the time, a very small business that had these big aspirational dreams of becoming national. Uh, again, gave us confidence and credibility that we could be bigger than just a couple of guys driving around town uh, in a cargo van. And the only other thing I'll mention, which was kind of neat, uh, we had a, a team member doing a move at an assisted living facility mm -hmm. and the elevator got stuck and there was an elderly woman in the elevator she was having trouble standing and uh, the young man one of our team members got on his hands and knees and let her sit on his back for uh, about an hour as the elevator was being worked on so that photo was taken it went viral shared on social media you know millions of times Amazing. and uh, actually companies like progressive capital one they use that now as part mm -hmm. of their customer service training as an example of, of going above and beyond for the client so That's those are just some little moments moments in time over the course of the, the history of the, our, our business that, that really stand out for me. And of course now we have over 100 franchise owners around the country, mm -hmm. uh, over 2,000 hunks hauling junk and, and moving furniture, mm -hmm. and probably close to 1,000 trucks uh, roaming the streets. Before we go take a look, right behind you, tell me what this is for. 
So we do a morning huddle every day, both the basketball hoop and the dartboard. Uh, we do trivia at the end of the morning huddle. And whoever, whichever team member wins the trivia gets a chance either at darts or basketball. And uh, if they, they land it, then they get a free lunch. So, so uh, if I throw that and hit the bullseye, I get a free you lunch. You get a free lunch, exactly. Where do I stand? Uh, probably stand right about here. I'll, I'll make it easy for you. So okay. you, Let me stand right here. There you go. You got it. Uh-oh. What do I get? Uh, you get nothing. No, you, get, you, get, okay. you get a high five. All right, all right. Let's uh, let's go see your business. So come oh. check out uh, where all the magic happens. Oh, wow, wow. Okay. Room full of uh, cubicles and people, sights and sounds. Uh, tell me what's going on here. So this is our sales and loyalty center. Okay. This is where we receive all inbound calls from all over the country, all 100 franchises around the country, okay. clients that are looking for moving services or junk removal services. Let me stop you right there. Yeah. I understand sales. Loyalty, what, what's that got? To, well, what, some what people might call this a call center. Uh -huh. we, 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 we don't call it that. We call it our sales and loyalty center because okay. uh, we're people that have a need for the service. We're selling them and providing them solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are a, in, the, in the client loyalty business because we okay. rely so heavily on repeat, referral, and reputation. Mm -hmm. So uh, the team member's job here is not just to book appointments, but to generate loyalty from our clients. To listen to him talk. He understood the cutting edge of business. People always ask us, hey, are they all really hunks? That's the first question usually somebody's gonna ask us, and we, we came up with an acronym to define hunks. It stands for Honest, Uniformed, Nice, Knowledgeable Service. I so, memorized that in case you asked me. There you go, was. oh, I should've asked you, yeah. <laughs> but by that definition, you know, I feel like I still qualify, so. <laughs> you uh, do. You're a good hunk. <laughs> appreciate it, you too. Let's stop here a minute. Yes, 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 yes. What, what's the deal there? Uh, the answer is yes, and what's the question? That's that's our mindset we have here. You know, we're a service concept. We're not a subscription-based business, so we rely heavily on addressing people's needs. So, uh, for us, so your intent on making sure you fulfill. Yeah, if we don't, what they're if we don't, if 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 we can't or or we don't do something, so, instead of saying no, we say let me find out or let me tell you what I can so do for I you. If I got the wrong number, said I really want to know where that ice cream shop is they would fulfill my request. We will look for that ice cream shop and we'll provide it. Matter of fact, we had a story recently. We had a, a client in Phoenix and uh, the client's car broke down and the hunk went out of his way to contact the local rental car agency and provide that information to the client to help them uh, awesome. get a rental car. And so that's, that's the awesome. idea is, is saying, instead of saying no, or I don't know, or I can't, we say, let me find out, or here's what I can do for you. It, we didn't invent that. We got that from some of the world-class companies mm -hmm. that provide great service, the, you know, the five-star luxury hotels mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so forth. That's awesome. Yep. That's the way a company ought to be. Yes, sir. We have two different training rooms mm -hmm. uh, that we utilize. This is our uh, smaller kind of stadium style uh, training room. This is where we train new franchise owners when they come in for a week of, of franchise training. Cool. And uh, uh, I'll show you our larger training room. I think we actually have a, a class going on right now. We're going to interrupt you guys real quick and do a little walkthrough. Right. So this is uh, our larger training room. As you can see, we've got a, a class of all-star sales and loyalty center agents uh, that are learning how to wow the clients, book the appointments. I want to give you a little piece of advice. There's a dartboard out there, you get the bullseye, you get a free lunch. <laughs> you miss it, you get a high five. <laughs> hey, some I'm might, glad you're in here. Some, some, some might argue training. the high five is better than a free lunch, <laughs> you know. Study hard. So yeah, so this is the, the team usually comes in for a week or two weeks of training to learn how to uh, not just book appointments, but provide a, a really memorable experience for the clients uh, on the phone so they can be recommending us to their friends and neighbors and, and using us uh, again and again. So Good company. I've heard some good stories. Fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you guys Thank for you. letting me interrupt. Thank you. This is our very large, very colorful break area. So why did you make a break room so big? You know, we have four core values as an organization, and one of those is fun, enthusiastic team environment. We want to create a place where people want to be, they don't feel like they have to be. And uh, to the extent that we can create a, an environment that's fun and playful and engaging, uh, that's what we wanted to do. Over on the wall, there is a good looking hump right in the center of that picture. His head's <laughs> a little bigger than the others. But uh, tell me about this guy. Well, this is yeah. our, our, our lovable it's college junk hunk. That's why okay. we call him CJ. And uh, he's, uh, you know, a mascot suit that's kind of 
been part of our guerrilla marketing tactics. Tell me what it is. Guerrilla marketing is kind of, you know, you got your traditional advertising, TV, radio, internet. Guerrilla marketing is more the grassroots advertising. So you park a truck on a visible corner so that people can see it. You put the CJ mascot out on the corner waving as people go by on the not traffic. Not bothering anybody, not, not trying to do a hard sale. No, just, not a hard sale, just, just, just branding, just you know, yeah, making your cool. presence known. And when we first started the business, that's actually how we got the name out because we couldn't afford advertising on the radio or even the internet and social media didn't exist back then so it was all about getting people to see the brand and one of our other core values is always branding. Now that I'm in the call center I wanted to have some fun and I'm glad the managers were on board. Ian, John Matthews. Yep. I've got some stuff at my house to uh, pick up and donate. What is it that you have for pick up? I have a old bandsaw. It's uh, about six feet tall and, and uh, I don't know what to do with it. So uh, if there was some kind of school that could use it, I'd like to move that. Two guys can handle it? Or you oh yeah, it take, it'd take a couple of okay. guys. What would be your ideal pick up date for that? Well, that's a, that's a problem. Uh, how about if I just, uh, I'm about 15 feet away from you. How about if I just come over and set a date with you? Well, um, there might not even be anybody there, to be honest. A lot of the times, all the guys are out working. This is the call center from the college home. Are you Ian? Oh, hello. What's going on? Let's just hang up this phone call and let me talk to you in person. And we are going to set a date for you to come pick this thing up. All right, How long have you worked here? Well, it'll be two years this November coming up. So you're going to make a career of this? Um, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to make a career of this uh, in the sales department. You know, I mean, I, mean, I wouldn't mind moving up mm -hmm. in this company because it is a great company to work for. It I is really a good like company. It. Yeah, I really like it here. It's on the cutting edge. Yeah. Well, this afternoon, I am going to go ride on one of the trucks. Nice. And we're going to go see if we fun. can find somebody to donate us whatever they want to give us. Nice. <laughs> he was a good sport. That's pretty funny. I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> uh, well, that's, uh, that's what we were hoping. That yeah. we see <laughs> I really enjoyed the tour, but I couldn't wait to sit down with Nick and talk to him about his business. I've uh, seen a number of businesses as I've traveled around the country, but you have a business that's operating on cutting edge philosophy. And what is that? I mean, if a business doesn't do some of these things, then they may not survive. So we, we've really, we didn't invent the next Facebook or the next Google. We didn't, you know, create some high tech business. We took a very simple business moving trucks and labor, and we put a very fresh approach to it. And so when people ask me, what do you do? I don't say we're a moving and junk removal company. I say we're a purpose driven, values based, socially conscious organization that happens to move people's stuff uh, and helps them get rid of their unwanted items or move them from point A to point B. I know it sounds like a lot of buzzwords, but it, it, it really is how we're, how we're operating. Nick was down to earth, pleasant, and easy to talk to. You don't always find that in a business owner of such a large business. We enjoy watching the impact it has on our team members, our franchise owners, and our clients. I think that's what gets me out of bed in the morning as an owner. Uh, one of the slogans we, or mantras we have for ourselves is don't chase the money, chase the dream. And uh, our vision or dream is to become recognized as a world-class iconic brand uh, that's giving people a platform to learn business, to learn customer service, and to have their own business in the franchise uh, sector as well. You know, it's funny, uh, it was the work itself is pretty tough. It's blue collar, tedious, you're getting your hands dirty, you're crawling through crawl spaces, hauling junk, you're moving furniture, you know, trying not to scratch walls or floors. But I never had more fun in any job experience than I did that summer hauling the junk and moving people's furniture because it was, it was exciting, we were creating, we were innovating, we were doing things our own, and we were seeing the immediate impact it had for people. 
all the experiences I had had in other jobs or internships was pretty unfulfilling and I couldn't see myself doing it for the next 20, 30, 40 years of my life. So that first time we bent down to pick up the couch, I'm not gonna lie, we were like, are we really doing this? And then once we went and put it on the truck, I was like, okay, we're, we're, we're doing this. And when I was in the corporate world, I wasn't enjoying getting out of bed in the morning. And I emailed my buddy uh, who I had hauled junk with the prior summer and said, you know, hey, I'm not enjoying this. What's our timeline for starting this business? He emailed me back all capital letters. My timeline's right now, exclamation point, let's do this. And we quit our jobs and started hauling junk full time. And our, you know, we saw some raised eyebrows. Parents, friends said, you're gonna quit your jobs to do what? Haul junk and move? And it's gonna be called what? College hunks? You know, you're gonna throw away your college degree to start a trash business. But we use that as motivation to say, you know, let's prove everybody wrong. We think there's something to this name, the brand. We think there's something to the service that we can uh, improve for people. And we had this lofty vision of becoming a national franchise so company. Vision, following your dream. Kayori told me that there were some bumps in the road. I'm just gonna be right up front. Have you ever done anything stupid with your money? It's amazing to me that a person can take an idea and turn it into a multi-million dollar business, but will still admit they've made mistakes and done something stupid with their money. Yes, uh, probably the first and, and stupidest thing we did when we moved down to Florida, our headquarters in Florida, is we bought a boat. And of course they say <laughs> the uh, best time in a boat owner's life is the day they, the day they buy it and the day they sell it. And I can sit here today and tell you that's very true. Omar and I are from Washington, D.C. We were city slickers. We knew nothing about boat ownership. Mm -hmm. We probably beached it three or four times on the sandbar. We probably had to replace two or three engines because we forgot to flush it. Yeah. Uh, we really couldn't afford it at the time. You know, the price tag that we bought it for ended up being three or four times that once you factor in all the maintenance and the upkeep. Uh, so that was the stupidest thing we've done. And, and, you know, now they say the best kind of boat is your friend's boat, and I, I believe that's true. I'm in pain just hearing you tell that story. <laughs> What did you learn from that? You know, I learned from it. We've, you've got to be smart with your money. You got to be, you got to be a little bit forward thinking, and you got to understand the difference between a liability and an asset, or an investment and an expense. And and so we've kind of taken that personal lesson and applied it here in business. You know, in businesses, you, in business, you do take some expense chances. You know, on a new marketing idea or a new initiative, but you've got to analyze those numbers to decide if it's going to provide a return for you. I guess you could argue that the boat might return return sort of a personal enjoyment or fulfillment, but you could rent a boat for a lot less than it Absolutely. costs to own it, and you still get the same fun and, and, and enjoyment out on the water. So that was really the lesson for me is, is, is understanding the difference between the, the liability and the asset and continue to try to accumulate assets. And the more assets you it's get, you don't go out and just run out and buy more liabilities. Right. One thing that uh really perked my interest is you give back. You get involved with uh, feeding children everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, every, every uh, business uh, uh, contact that has a job completed, you donate two meals. Can, tell me, how did you get involved in that? So as I mentioned, we're, you know, we consider ourselves a values-based, purpose-driven organization. And our, we say our purpose is to move the world, not just moving people's stuff physically, but moving people emotionally, making a difference in people's lives. And it was actually our franchise owners that came to us one day and said, you know, we really ought to have a national social cause that we engage with that becomes a, almost synonymous with our brand and our brand efforts. And we actually surveyed all of our franchise owners, our team members, and our clients, and we said, what cause is most important to you? And childhood hunger actually was the top rated on all three of those uh, constituents and we looked into childhood hunger charities and found that feeding children everywhere is one that we could really wrap our heads behind because what we do is as you mentioned donate two meals for every completed job we donated over 350,000 meals last year we want to do over a million meals in the first three years which will certainly surpass uh, and, and there's an experiential component to it as well because we host hunger projects. We're actually bagging up the meals, providing the labor. So for, this is not just writing a check to them or you it, do that and you also participate in bagging those meals. Exactly, because if, if you're just writing a check, we feel like it's very left brain, it's somewhat yeah. cerebral. You, you know, you write the check and anybody can do that, but when you experience something and, and the physical act of bagging up the meals and in some cases being able to see the impact on the community that you're helping with that, uh, it, it touches your heart and, and you really rally behind it and become very passionate about it and, and I think it's it's galvanized everybody in our organization around that. I have enjoyed visiting with you. You really know your business well and you're one busy president of a company. But I cannot wait to go get my hands on some junk. I want to ride in the truck and I want to see if there's somebody out there that will donate something. 
to someone else. Awesome. Well, you look ready for it, except you're missing one thing, and that is the official College oh, Hunks right. Hauling Junk jersey. This will make you an right. official hunk. I uh, like that. Always branding, as we say. You're, you're not in, in, in a hunk unless you're wearing the uniform, and uh, you can represent we'll, it well. We'll make that. us proud out there. It's not every day you get to sit down with Nick Friedman, but I couldn't wait to get on the truck. Hello? Hey, is this Lenny? Yes, it is. This is John Matthews with College Hunks. Are you still game for us to come by and pick up some things? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll be there in about 10 minutes. All right, see you soon. Thank you, bye. It was a hot Florida day, and it was a hot truck. I think you might work at this company after college? Or... I definitely see the potential. Yeah. I, I love this company. I would meet tons of people, um, you know, from all different types of backgrounds. And, you know, I just love talking to people. I love um, meeting new people. And, and this is the one way you actually feel like you're actually helping somebody, you know. Nobody likes moving. Nobody likes, you know, purging the stuff that they really care about. And so when you can come through and, and do it and help them out, so you go to places, to homes, and people say, where on earth did you get that name? College hunks. <laughs> I think the one that we hear most is what people say, are you guys actual hunks? Yeah, and we you say, <laughs> are you guys actually in college? Yeah, that's one. Yeah. I guess I actually am in college. Uh -huh. And then I tell them, I don't know. You tell me if I'm a hunk. Give them a nice, <laughs> give them a nice little smile. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have an interesting question for you. All right. Uh, Roberto. Yes. What's a stupid thing you've ever done with your money? With my money? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my uh, um, let's see. Bought a lot of clothes that didn't fit, I guess, or like clothes that didn't really need. <laughs> the place we went to didn't have a fitting room, so I was like, okay, well, okay. It, it looks like it fits. And then when I go back home and try to put it on, I ripped all the tags off, so I was so excited. Not okay, then what, <laughs> you, what did you do with them? I just gave them away. Gave them away. <laughs> and you learned to uh, put your clothes on first. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the fitting room. Oh, oh me. I have a feeling most of us have done that from one time or another. All right, Adrian. Yes, sir. What's a stupid thing you've ever done with your money? I would, I would probably have to say um, I bought a motorcycle helmet. Mm -hmm. That was eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars. Yeah, the lady she had she had she 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 got me. She sold me. She said, you know, if you're gonna get in a motorcycle accident, you know, you have one chance at protecting your head. You mm -hmm. might as well, you know, put the best helmet on. Get, so I said okay. to me, I said, yeah, that's a no-brainer. I want to live. You know, I want to protect mm -hmm. my head. And so, you know, I got my motorcycle license and I, I got the motorcycle helmet and I got all the gear. And that was about a year ago, and I still don't have a motorcycle. So I just got all this nice, you know, motorcycle gear and equipment. I know how to ride, and I just don't have a motorcycle, so it's not being put to use. It was just a waste of a thousand dollars. Well, you got a bicycle? I don't even have a bicycle. <laughs> I couldn't help but notice the Lord's Supper tattooed on his arm. That's not something you see every day. Tell me about your tattoos. How did you happen to choose uh, the Lord's Supper? My dad was actually a pastor growing mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. and. That's the main reason why I want to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. Once I get out of school and everything, I think that's God's purpose for my life. Mm -hmm. And my dad actually passed away um, this past January. Mm -hmm. And so when he passed away, um, you know, it was really a, a, an eye-opening experience for me. Yeah. Um, it was the first major loss I ever had. Sometimes it's easy to judge people by what you see, but when you talk with them, you really can find out their true character. When I was at his funeral, the message that got that that was brought to me was it's it's about the impact it's not about the things that you have um, because in this life everything is material and mm -hmm. you know the Bible tells us that this this world is not our this earth is not our home it's not our home you know and but when, when my dad passed away that was the first like real hey this earth is not our home and, and but you know everybody that came up to me and expressed their condolences and everything the one thing that they told me was you know about how how you know outgoing my dad was and how he brought them to Christ mm -hmm. and so you know when I decided to get the Lord's Supper tattoo 
um, a lot of people see it and they're like, wow, is that the Lord's Supper type of tune? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, but it just opens up the ability to talk to people about Jesus and, mm-hmm. and really about, hey, this is the last supper before he died for your sins. Mm-hmm. So, you know, no matter what you're going through. Mm-hmm. You know, you're well, your dad was a powerful witness passing that gospel torch on to you. Yes, sir. And, uh, and I love him for and, it. And you'd be a good pastor. Oh, thank you. And uh, this guy over here, he could be your manager. <laughs> All right, we're almost here. It's going to be right. Looks like it's going to be right on the other side of the stop sign up here. All right. Before if I... we pull up to the house, this is mm-hmm. always the secret to all success. Mm-hmm. Freshness right there. Freshness right there. Got to okay. make sure, you know, we're talking <laughs> okay. to the clients. Give them a nice little fresh yep. breath. Make sure we're good to go. Boy, that's got a bite. It's got a nice little <laughs> bite to it, doesn't it? <laughs> Paperwork, got the gloves on top for you. All right, let's go. After you. Do it. Just have some debris here for my renovations. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Just need it hauled away. So this is what's left. That's it. Okay, we'll take good care of it. I see. You know that wheelbarrow? Yep. If you're ever in the army, don't volunteer for anything, especially driving the general's car. Gotcha. Because that's the general's <laughs> car. <laughs> so. All right, guys, let's go. Three, one, two, three. Alrighty. Help them out, Adrian. Yes. Alright. Sit down, your All right. All right. I think that ought to increase your salary. We done? Yes, sir. I qualify to get a job. <laughs> there it is. There you go. To be successful in life, your home or business, there is no room for being lazy. Remember, start with purpose, values, and goals, and then execute.